So we saw the main units here in the last hour now, and we saw how to convert between those main units within each system. We're going to start off this section of the class looking at converting between the metric and standard systems. <coughs> For example, in length measurement, the one conversion that I have memorized between the metric and standard system is that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. The reason I use that one is because that one is pretty much exact. All the other conversions are very, very loose. So if I have something that is 8 inches long and I want to convert it into centimeters, I make the 8 into fraction by putting it over 1. I put inches on bottom over here, centimeters on top. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. The cent inches cross cancel out. I have 8 times 2.54, which is what? 20.32 centimeters. 1 times 1 is 1, so that's just 20.32 centimeters. If I wanted to go from centimeters to inches, let's say I have something that is 10 centimeters long and I want to convert it into inches. I'll put centimeters on bottom and inches on top. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Centimeters cancel out. 10 times 1 inch is 10 inches. 1 times 2.54 is 2.54. And we divide that out. 10 divided by 2.54 is 3.937 inches. Now, the way your textbook tends to do things is they tend to want to have the denominator of that conversion factor equal 1 whenever possible. So I believe this is chapter 10 in your book, looking at units of measurement. Your metric to standard conversions are on page find it. <coughs> there it is, page 576. So on page 576, it has a ton of these metric to standard conversions. So if I am converting inches to centimeters, I would use it just like I did here because one inch is on bottom. I'm, I have one in my denominator. If I was going from centimeters to inches like this one, I would not use this equivalency according to this textbook. I mean, to me, it's just fine. It's easier just to have one equivalency and not have to memorize more. But the way this textbook handles it is it always wants to put one in the denominator. So we look here. We have one centimeter equals 0.394 inches. So now the centimeter cancels out. You have 10 times 0.394, which is 3.94 inches over 1, which is just 3.94 inches. So you can see it's the same number, just a little bit of rounding difference. If you use the, a conversion factor different from what the textbook does on my math lab, it will be off by that rounding error, and it will be wrong. If that happens, let me know, and I will go back in there, and I will regrade your quizzes and change it. And I, I mean, the homework, it doesn't matter. Your homework is graded for completeness anyway, so as long as you do it, as long as you know that it's right, and you can see it's off by just a tenth or a hundredth or a thousandth, you know it's just to use the different conversion factor. In the quizzes, if it marks it wrong, let me know, and I'll regrade the quizzes for you and give you those points back. But just so you know, my math lab always wants a one on the bottom of that conversion factor. So let's say I have the distance between my home and here is 12 miles. And I want to know how much that is in kilometers. So I look, page 596, or 576, I have one kilometer equals 0.62 miles, or I have one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. To figure out which one of those I'd want, either one of them will work, like I said. But to figure out which one I should use for my math lab, 
I have my 12 miles, put it over 1. In my conversion factor, miles have to go on bottom so that they cancel out. I want the one that has a 1 with miles. I want 1 on bottom. That's going to be this one. 1 mile is 1.61 kilometers. So 12 times 1.61 is 19.32 kilometers. The miles canceled out. Of course, that's over 1, so just 19.32. If I'd used the other conversion factor, it would still work. I have 12 miles, put it over 1. Miles, kilometers, it's 1 kilometer is 0.62 miles. Miles cancel, it's 12 kilometers over 0.62. 12 divided by 0.62. Same thing, kilometer, kilometer, yeah. 19.35. Yes, kilometer is about 0.62 miles, it's less than a mile. You can see here, depending on which conversion factor I use, it is slightly different because of round off errors. So I said this is the one that my math lab is looking for because it's got a 1 in the denominator of our conversion factor. The next step in those conversions, what if I tell you I can throw a ball at the speed of 90 feet per second? I think about that as being on a baseball field. If I'm standing on first base and I throw the ball to home plate, I can have the ball at home plate in one second. It's exactly 90 feet. Do you think I can, would you believe me that I can throw a ball that fast? Be like, no, we don't want to say no. He's our teacher. He's going to get mad. Well, what are we used to seeing speed expressed in? Miles per hour, right? 90 miles per hour would be a pretty good fastball. Well, let's convert our 90 feet per second into 90 miles per hour. 90 feet per second is really 90 feet over one second. Now, we have to change feet into miles, so I'm going to do that first. Feet will go on bottom, miles on top. One mile is 5,280 feet. So the feet have cross-canceled out, they're gone. Notice I didn't put one on bottom because it would be a really ugly conversion factor. Now I have to get rid of seconds. Now seconds are on bottom here, so to cancel them out, I have to put seconds on top. Now I want to get to hours, but I don't have a direct conversion from seconds to hours. Kind of like when we did the cups to gallons. So I'm going to have to go seconds to minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. So the seconds will cancel out. Right now we have miles per minute. So I'm going to get rid of minutes. Minutes are on bottom, so to get rid of them, I'm going to put them on top. I'm going to hours. One hour is 60 minutes. So the minutes cancel out. On top, I have 90 times 1 times 60 times 60 is about 3. I'm blacking out here. Three thousand two hundred. Three hundred twenty-four thousand. Thank you. Three hundred twenty-four thousand miles. On bottom, one times fifty-two eighty times one times one hour is five thousand two hundred eighty hours. If I divide those out, three hundred twenty-four thousand divided by fifty-two eighty. What is that? Like Sixty-one point three seven, something like that. Three six. Yeah. Three six miles per hour. Now how many of you think I can do it? Everybody's going to speak up? Okay. I'd have to warm up first, but I could probably throw a few of them at 61 miles an hour yet. Probably not many. So you can see here we can do some rather complex conversions just by using that conversion factor idea of whatever we have to can't, we have to cross cancel it out within our fractions. <coughs> Let's say that we have a pump that can do 280 gallons per minute. 
We want to know how many cubic feet per minute that will be. So gallons per minute, that's 280 gallons over one minute, we'll write it as. To convert it, do we want to get rid of the minutes? No, we're keeping minutes. That stays the same. We want to get rid of gallons. So we're going to put gallons on bottom here. What are we changing gallons into? Cubic feet. Our relationship between gallons and cubic feet. One cubic foot is... I said 7.48 gallons. So the gallons cross cancel out. 280 times 1 cubic foot is 280 cubic feet. 1 minute times 7.48 is 7.48 minutes. So 280 divided by 7.48. 37.43 cubic feet per minute. That's a pretty healthy pump. What if I have a pump set at 25 gallons per minute and I want to go into liters per minute? Well, again, just like going our centimeters into inches or inches to centimeters or miles to kilometers, we have to look up the relationship between gallons and liters. The minutes are going to stay the same. I haven't given you that one yet. So 25 gallons per minute is 25 gallons over one minute. In our conversion factor, we're getting rid of gallons. We're going to put gallons on bottom. We're going to liters. We're going to put liters on top. So if I look at page 576, looking for a conversion. Now which one do I want the one to be with? Liters or gallons? Liters, because it's, or no, actually gallons, because it's on bottom. I want it to be one gallon. So I look here, in my units there, I've got one gallon equals 3.79 liters. Usually I use 3.785 is the one I have memorized, but this book uses 3.79. So on bottom, I have one minute times one is just one minute. On top, I have 25 times 3.79 which gives us 94.75 liters. So 25 gallons per minute is 94.75 liters per minute. What do you think? Not horrible? Let's look at weight. If I were to tell you, I have a friend who weighs 85 kilograms. The first thing I'd hope you would tell me is, well, kilograms isn't a weight, it's a mass. But, as we mentioned, we tend to use mass in the metric system and weight in the standard system. So when we convert, we do convert from mass to weight and from weight to mass. And we, we ignore that difference because we're staying on Earth and... They're fairly interchangeable on Earth. So we're going to change that kilogram into pounds. So we're getting rid of kilograms. We're going to put kilograms on bottom, pounds on top. Where do we want the one to go? On bottom. We always want to try to put the... We can put it either place, but my math lab wants us to put the one on bottom whenever we're doing a conversion factor. So one kilogram, if we look it up, one kilogram... 2.2 pounds. <coughs> so the kilograms cancel out. 85 times 2.2 2 is 187 over 1, so 187 pounds. One kilogram, 2.2. That's in the bottom right of that table there. What if I was going the other way? What if I have somebody who is a 160 five pounds, and I want to know how much they weigh in kilograms. I'm going to do the same thing. 165 pounds over one. 
and my conversion factor, pounds are going to go on bottom and kilograms on top. Now I could use that same relationship, one kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds is going to work out the same. But my math lab wants us to put the one where? On bottom. So we want one pound. So if we look, there is a relationship there. One pound is 0.454 kilograms. So the pounds cancel. 165 times 0.454 is 74.91 kilograms. If I had used the other conversion, by the way, 165 pounds over 1, 1 kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds, 165 divided by 2.2 is still 75. It's really close. So the difference is just round off here. It's just my math lab is always expecting you to put 1 in the denominator. Any questions? Okay, well, next we want to talk about <coughs> this. I convert square feet into square inches. Two square feet is not 24 square inches. Because one square foot is defined to be a square that is one foot by one foot. Well, there's 12 inches in a foot, so that's 12 inches by 12 inches. Well, 12 by 12 is 144 square inches in one square foot. So when I go to do this conversion, two square feet, I put it over one, put square feet on bottom, square inches on top, one square foot is 144 square inches. So the square feet cancel out. 2 times 144 is 288 square inches. I see a lot of mistakes made on this. You, instant, you see this, the feet and the inches, you think, oh, times 12. Be careful, it is square feet and square inches. Similar to that, we have 3,456 square inches, and I want to go back into square feet. We're going to divide by 12? Say no. No. Why not? It's squared. One square foot is not 12 inches, it's 144 square inches. So, inches cancel out. This is 3,456 square feet over 144, we divide that out, that is 24 square feet. How about two cubic feet, the cubic inches. One cubic foot is defined to be a cube that is one foot by one foot by one foot. Well, that's 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. 12 times 12 times 12, 1,728 cubic inches in one cubic foot. So to convert this, I've got my two cubic feet over one, cubic feet on bottom, 1,728 cubic inches on top, <coughs> cubic feet cancel out, 2 times 1728 is 3,456 cubic inches. I don't know, that's the number I just used before. <coughs> so what if I had... Fifty-four square feet. I want to go into square yards. How many feet are in a yard? Three. There's three feet in one yard. 
So how many square feet are there going to be in a square yard? Well, it'll be three by three, which is nine. So to get from square feet into square yards, nine square feet is one square yard. So it's going to be 54 divided by 9, only 6 square yards. Here's one I used to use a lot. Let's say I have 567 cubic feet. I want to go into cubic yards. Well, one yard is still 3 feet. One cubic yard is going to be three cubed, or three by three by three, which is 27 cubic feet. Did you ever see where the 27 came from? It's a cube. So one yard is three feet by three feet by three feet. So three times three is nine, times three is 27 cubic feet. So when we go to do our conversion, 567 cubic feet over 1. 1 cubic yard is 27 cubic feet. Cubic feet cancel out. 567 divided by 27 is 21 cubic yards. I used to do a lot of concrete work. Concrete is always ordered in cubic yards. So you Measure everything out in feet, calculate it out, then you have to divide it out to get it into cubic yards. In the metric system, every position on the chart was multiplying or dividing by 10, so we just move the decimal point one spot. If it's 3.2 meters, Going into centimeters, that was two places on the chart. Move the decimal over two spots. It's 320 centimeters. What if, however, it was 3.2 meters squared going into centimeters squared? Now it's not multiplying or dividing by 10. It's multiplying and dividing by 10 by 10 or 10 squared, which is 100. When you multiply or divide by 100, it moves the decimal point two spots. So now when it's square units, every spot on the chart is two decimal places. So moving two spots to the right to get from meters to centimeters tells us our decimal point has to move double that, or four spots to the right. So one, two, we fill in the zeros, three, and four. That is 32,000 square centimeters. If we have 3.2 meters cubed, cubic meters, and the centimeters cubed, same thing. Two spots to the right on the chart, but now each spot is not multiplying or dividing by 10. It's multiplying and dividing by 10 cubed, or 10 by 10 by 10, which is 1,000. When you multiply or divide by 1,000, it moves the decimal point three spots. So two spots on the chart, we have to triple that, so we've got to move the decimal point six spots. So one, two, we've got to add zeros, three, four, five, six, which is 3,200,000 centimeters cubed. <clears throat> so similar to that, we might have 5,800 meter or millimeters squared going into centimeters squared. Millimeters to centimeters is one spot to the left. But because it's squared, we double it. So we move two spots to the left. That's 58 centimeters squared. We might have 27,000 millimeters cubed going into centimeters cubed. Again, millimeters to centimeters is one spot to the left on the chart. Because it's cubed, we have to triple it. So one spot on the chart is three decimal places. One, two, three, that is 27 
centimeters cubed. Any questions? Okay, so there's a new homework. I almost said quiz there, but there isn't a quiz due tomorrow. New homework due for next Tuesday. <coughs> if you are not in class next Tuesday, I know a lot of people have traveled for the holidays, and I know deer hunting is almost a national holiday. But uh, if you're not here next Tuesday, there will be a quiz that is due by midnight on Wednesday next week. So if you're not here next Tuesday, do not, do not miss that quiz.